Hello, I'm Yasser Jenab, Interventional Cardiologist in Tehran Heart Center, presenting the topic Percutaneous Lift Transhepatic Access for PTMC of a patient with dextrocardia and IVC interruption. Infinium Venacava or IVC is usually used for left heart related procedures with the catheter entering through the right or left femoral vein axis and following the inferior vena cava into the atrial septum. Atrial septal puncture facilitates access to the left atrium for interventional operations. However, in the absence of the IVC, we need another access to the left atrium. Superior approaches through the right internal jugular vein or the right subclavian vein have been documented in the literature using the rigid angulated sheath or a sterile sheet to enter the left atrium via the superior vena cava into the atrial septum. The hepatic vein provides a shorter, more direct access to bypass the IVC access to bypass the IVC than the superior and femoral vein or retrograde aortic axis. Hepatic vein approaches generally offer greater catheter stability and more familiar operations compared with the superior approach. A 42-year-old woman with dyspnea and exertion and dextrocardia. She was referred for mitral valve replacement to our center. Our evaluation in CT angiography, transesophageal echocardiography, and venography showed interruption of the IVC with azigus continuation into the left SVC. In these two figures, you can see azigus continuation of inferior vena cava in one patient with levocardial or no dextrocardia, and you see the azigus continuation to the SVC. And another patient with dextrocardia, like our patient with azigus and continuation to the SVC, SVC and the hepatic uh, or liver in the left side of the patient. Three dimensional transesophageal echocardiography showed dextrocardia, normal LV side with mild cystic dysfunction, normal RV side with mild cystic dysfunction, left atrium is severely enlarged, severe rheumatismal mitral stenosis. Moderate mitral regurgitation, moderate aortic regurgitation, moderate tricuspid regurgitation, mild precardial effusion, and right and left superior vena cava. The CT scan showed the inferior vena cava was interrupted. The azigus extended to the left SVC, and the hepatic vein drained directly to the right atrium. You can see the dextrocardia the hepatic veins and that's the azigus drains into the left SVC and you can see and you can see the hepatic veins direct drains directly to the right atrium that's left atrium based on detailed CT analysis the hepatic access rather than access from jugular vein or retrograde access from aorta was selected for interatrial septostomy and balloon dilation of mitral valve. As the patient had dextrocardia and our access was left hepatic vein from left side of the patient, we changed our cat lab room setting. So on the right side of the patient, we placed our fluoroscopy monitors and our echocardiographer for transesophageal echocardiography. And on the left side of the patient, we stand it for doing the procedure. With ultrasound and fluoroscopic assistance, an 18 gauge Shiba needle was steered into the middle hepatic vein from the left costal margin between the mid clavicular and right anterior axillary line of the patient left side. Its positioning confirmed with contrast injection. A O35 inch hydrophilic wire was placed through the needle into the right atrium and then six front sheet was placed in the right atrium. Then the sheet was replaced sequentially with eight and 14 front sheets or O35 ampullas type suggestive guide wire. At the end, an agilis serial introducer was placed within the metronic inducer sheet 14 French, as you can see in the video. Transeptal puncture was performed with a bit difficulty under flow guidance while directing the broken bone needle pointing toward six to seven hours. After atrial septostomy, intravenous heparin was administered. The gradient across the mitral valve was measured about 50 mm of mercury, and then O25 stainless steel inoguide was introduced through the transeptal catheter into the left atrium 
and the 26 mm in balloon was then advanced through 14 French sheet within LA. The inner balloon was then readily advanced to the left ventricle and inflated sequentially to maximum balloon size of 26. The final mitral valve gradient decreased to 8 mm of mercury. At the end of the procedure, protamine was administered. The 14 French sheet with the A1 catheter was withdrawn to the hepatic vein. A1 catheter was used for deployment of two cooked coils in the approximate the tract between the hepatic vein and the capsule of the liver to secure hemostasis to achieve immediate hemostasis. As you can see in the video, no preprocedure complications occurred. Full anticoagulation with IV heparin and warfarin initiated 24 hours after the procedure. You can see the calls delivered in the parenchyma of the liver through A1 catheter. That's the sheet. And at last, we withdrawn the sheet. Control CT scan immediately after the procedure and 24 hours later showed no significant bleeding. You can see the calls within the liver. The application of the transhepatic approach is widely used, applied in cardiac procedures for pediatric patients and other diagnostic or interventional cardiac procedures. Alternative approaches of entry to the atria are possible when the IVs is not available. A super approach through the super cova has been well described for invasive procedures, including uh, electrophysiology positive procedures. Uh, however, transeptal access also may be challenging with a superior approach because the lack of the sheet support when positioning and puncturing through the fossa ovalis. So transhepatic access in these cases can be a good option. Summary, in patients without femoral vein access, the use of the hepatic vein for endovascular procedures is a viable option. Thanks for your watching.